Okay, today we're going to talk about congruent triangles. So before we get to the proof, we're actually going to talk about why two triangles are congruent. So at the top of the page, triangles are congruent if they have the same size and same shape. If you have two figures or two polygons that are the same shape but not necessarily the same size, they're similar. So they have some of the same characteristics, but they're not all the same or all parts corresponding parts are not congruent. So when we talk about corresponding parts, well the parts of a triangle are the sides and the angles. So angles and sides. To identify, so they may give you a picture, okay, but re really helps you determine which angles in which sides are congruent is this congruency statement. It has to be written in order of congruency. So when I have triangle ABC written first, congruent to triangle JKL, that means angle A is congruent to angle J. And we can mark it with one arc. Next in line is B. So angle B is congruent to angle K. And then in order, angle C is congruent to angle L. So we'll put 2 for B and K, and then 1, 2, 3. The sides also in order of the letters within the statement. But once you have this side marked, so the side AB, which has one arc to two arcs for the angle, that would be corresponding to JK, because that has the one and then the two arcs. But down here, AB and JK are the first two letters in each of those statements. So AB is congruent to JK. BC is congruent to KL. And then CA is congruent to JL. So if you have congruent triangles, then all of the corresponding parts are congruent. So if we look at question number one. So we're given two congruent triangles. We have to find X, Y, and the measure of angle D, B, C. So I know angle A is congruent to angle C, B is congruent to angle B, and then D is congruent to angle D. So how am I going to find, let's go in order, how do I find the value of X? Beth? 4X plus 10 equal to 90. If the adjacent angle and that linear pair is 90, then yes, the supplement is also 90. Right here, there's an expression with x in there, and I know the angle C is congruent to angle A, but there's nothing given here. So I do have to use the expression 4x plus 10 is equivalent to 90. Subtract 10, 4x is equal to 80, divide by 4, x is 20. How do I find the value of y? There's only one expression with y in it, so it makes it a little bit easier than the x. Yes, how do I find y? y minus 7 equals 12. So add 12, or add 7 to 12, and y is 19. So to finish, we have to find the measure of angle DBC. So DBC, that's this angle, and I can look at that right triangle. Remember, the two acute angles in a right triangle are complementary. You could add all three up to 90, but if I plug x in here, 20 plus 11 is 31, then this angle here would just be 90 minus 31. What's the difference between 90 and 31? 59. So 59 degrees equals the measure of angle DBC. The table goes 
with an uh, example number two. And it starts by stating that for any equilateral or blank triangle, what's another term when you classify a triangle according to its sides besides equilateral? If it's equilateral, it's also isosceles. So these properties hold true for both an equilateral or isosceles triangle. There are three segments in that triangle that are all the same. And they're drawn from the vertex angle. So our vertex angle, let's say AB is congruent to BC, our vertex angle is angle B. One of those segments, and I'll see if you can give me the other, is the altitude. The altitude is drawn perpendicular to the base. And to help us fill in the blanks, you want to take a guess, if that's an isosceles or equilateral triangle, what else do you think that altitude does to that triangle? When I draw it perpendicular to the base, Kelly? It is a median, yes. If I have, let's call this point D, then BD is a median because BD also bisects the base. So it is also a median. It does one other thing. It also, instead of just bisecting, well, if that's a right angle, I know that's a right angle. So let's just help us with what's going on in the triangle. Um, I have two sides congruent to two sides on the right. By reflexive, that's where they align or touch. They share that same side. That's also a congruent side. There's one other relationship with that segment. And not only bisects the base, is drawn perpendicular, Sean. It's an angle bisector. This angle here is congruent to that angle there. So it's also an angle bisector. So they are drawn from uh, the vertex angle to the opposite side are the same segment. So just to highlight or bullet what we just wrote, the median altitude and the angle bisector from the vertex angle bisects the base and the vertex angle. It's perpendicular to the base, and it divides the triangle into two right triangles. That's a typo. So to finish that picture, because it divides it into two congruent right triangles, angle A would be congruent to angle C. So number two, it says, if the base of an isosceles triangle is 12, so we want to start by first drawing an isosceles triangle. The base is 12 inches, and the altitude is 8 inches. What is the perimeter? So I'm going to call this x and this x, because the perimeter is the sum of all three sides. So my perimeter is 12 plus 2 x. So how would I find x? Using the relationship that the altitude is also a median and an angle bisector. The angle bisect, uh, bisector is not going to help us find the length of a side, but the fact that it's a median will, because that means that this point here is a midpoint. So if the whole base is six or 12, that means this is 6 inches and this is six inches. So in a right triangle, when I'm trying to find the hypotenuse, what theorem can we use given the measure of two of your legs? Maddie? The Pythagorean theorem. So leg squared, you just got to be careful on what you're substituting. It's leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. So this is going to be six squared plus 8 squared equals x squared. Adding this together, 36 and 64 is 100. 
you could subtract the 100 and then factor. You should make note that if it's a degree 2 equation, you're going to have two solutions. But the easier way, other than factoring, is just to take the square root to undo that square. So taking the square root of both sides, we get 10 and a negative 10. And we reject the negative 10 because we can't have a negative length. So plugging it back in to the perimeter is 12 plus 2 times 10, and 20 plus 12, the perimeter is going to be 32 inches. On the next page, we're going to get into the proofs. And so what I want you to do is take a minute and read this top part to yourself, and then I will highlight what each of those postulates is within the picture. Okay, to summarize what's going on in the pictures, instead of taking the time to prove that every single angle in both triangles is congruent and every single side is congruent, we have some shortcuts. The first one is the side, side, side postulate. And that basically says if you can prove that AB is congruent to XY, if you can prove that BC is congruent to YZ, and that AC is congruent to XZ, then the triangles are congruent. Okay? So you would need three congruency statements of this, you know, of each side being congruent. Now, to do side angle side, what's important is that the angle that's congruent has to be an included angle. It has to be included between the two sides. So say I pick AB is congruent to XY and AC is congruent to XC. The angle that would have to be congruent, or the angles, for in order to have a side angle side congruency would be angle A and angle X. The angle has to be included between the two sides. So take a minute to look at your pictures or your diagrams in example three, and we're going to determine whether each pair of triangles is congruent by side angle side, side side side, or neither. So there's five total shortcuts, and we're only learning two today. Okay, let's go over these. So the first triangle. This one right here, we'll call this triangle number one. Brian, do you think those triangles are congruent by SAS, SSS, or neither? SSS. Now, in the picture, it's already marked that I have two sides congruent to two sides. What did you use to determine that this side was congruent to this side for your SSS? There's nothing that tells us that, right? So it can't be SSS. Could it be side angle side? Yeah, it is side angle side because no matter what's given, if you have two intersecting lines, vertical angles are always congruent. So since vertical angles are congruent, these triangles are congruent by side angle side because the angle, this angle here, is included between your two congruent sides. Katie, what about the one to the right? Are those triangles congruent by SSS, SAS, or neither? SSS. SSS. Reflexive property here. If you have two triangles that overlap or touch, they share a common side. So this is yes by side, side, side. Nick, what about the next one? Neither is correct. And the reason it would be is because the angle is not included between these two sides. If that was the angle that was congruent, it would work. But since the angle is not included between those two congruent sides, this was neither. And the last one, Kelly, did you get this one? It's not neither, Kylie. Side angle side. These two triangles touch right here. So any side or segments congruent to itself by reflexive property. So this is yes 
by side angle side as the angle is included between the two pairs of congruent sides. Good. Now, this is review. We've talked about what a median is, but we have yet to talk about what a midpoint gives us. I think we did discuss it, but we didn't formally write it up. If D is the midpoint, then that means A to D, so segment AD is congruent to BD because a midpoint divides a segment into two congruent segments. There's something else that also divides a segment into, into two congruent segments, and that's at the top of the next page. An angle bisector divides an angle into two congruent angles. A segment bisector, so if QT bisects PS, that means PR is congruent to SR. Because a segment bisector divides a segment into two congruent segments. When it comes to the proofs on your homework, classwork, tests, I may have it all filled out with some missing uh, statements and reasons. You just have to fill in the missing parts. I may have the givens, in this case, already written in, so you don't have to take the time to write the givens. But then start to number, and then we're only looking to use side, 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 or side, angle, side congruency, okay? So in this picture, they tell us that given SP is congruent to SR, they tell us that PQ is congruent to RQ, we need to ask ourselves, is there any way to have this angle congruent? If there is, then it's side angle side. Or do I want to say that QS is congruent for side side side? So which can we conclude? Can I conclude that angle P is congruent to angle R, angle R or do I know that QS is congruent to QS? Kylie? We know that any segment is congruent to itself by the reflexive property. So now, because I have my three S's, I have that side congruent to that side, this side congruent to that side, and then another pair of congruent sides. So I have three sides congruent to three sides. We're done. So now I can state that triangle SPQ is congruent to triangle SRQ by side, side, side. Because it's our notes, we can draw the arrow. On your homework, you can draw the arrow. You cannot draw the arrow on an assessment. You have to write it all out. Number five. It's given that RP is congruent to RQ. So those two pieces of those sides are congruent. It's also given that PV is congruent to QS. And we have a median. Now, in order to do side, angle, side, we need to have an angle congruent and also two pairs of corresponding sides congruent. In order for side, 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 we need three pairs of corresponding sides congruent. If I know that on this side, this is congruent to this, and this is congruent to this, we can add those congruent parts together to have the whole side congruent to this whole side. So number two would be RV is congruent to RS by addition property. Anytime the triangles overlap or touch, we will always have reflexive. So we have reflexive on RT. And 
And now I'll go back to the only given we haven't used. Now, RT is a median. So at the beginning of the notes, we talked about what a median does in an isosceles triangle. Do we have an isosceles triangle? Yes. Now, in order to move forward in the proof and use that property, you have to state you have an isosceles triangle. It's more steps at this point to do that, so I'm just going to finish with if RT is a median to VS, T is a midpoint, which makes this segment congruent to this segment. There's our side, side, side. We're done. It's just shorter to do it that way than the other way. So, number four, T is the midpoint of VS. And that's because a median of a triangle is drawn to the midpoint of the opposite side. And because I have a midpoint, number five, VT is congruent to ST. Because a midpoint divides a segment into two congruent segments. And we're done by side, side, side. So this is my triangle VRT congruent to triangle. SRT. Okay, in example number six, it says we have ray BDP. That's just letting you know you have a straight line, okay, because a ray is a part of a line. It's given that AD is congruent to CD. So here's my givens. And also that angle one is congruent to angle two. Because the triangles share a side, they're touching, right here at BD, we know that BD is congruent to itself by the reflexive property. So number two, BD congruent to BD. By the reflexive property. These two angles right here form a linear pair, so I'm going to mark this angle as 3, this angle is 4, so we have a linear pair above that segment and below. So number 3, angle 1, and angle 3 are supplementary, as well as angle 2 and angle 4. And that's because linear pairs are supplementary. Yeah, and since 1 is congruent to angle 2, so if these two angles add up to 180 and those two angles add up to 180, and angle 1 is congruent to angle 2, then yes, angle 3 must be congruent to angle 4 because supplements of congruent angles are congruent. So in each triangle, just to highlight in this shade of pink, we've got side, angle, side, congruent to in tan, side, angle, side. So we are done with the proof. So this is our last statement. Triangles are congruent because of SAS. So let's finish with number seven. I want you to discuss it with someone around you and then we'll go over it. Finish. In number seven, we have our givens. We have triangle VRS with RT perpendicular to VS. Now perpendicular lines give you right angles. So I'm going to put a 1 and a 2 here. So angle 1 and angle 2 are right angles. Now 
And that's because perpendicular lines intersect to form right angles. And because we're doing side, side, side congruency, side, angle, side congruency, I need those angles to be congruent. So angle one is congruent to angle two because all right angles are congruent. We have RT reflexive. And then the last statement to use is RT bisects VS. So if RT bisects this segment, then VT is congruent to ST. Because a segment bisector divides a segment into two congruent segments. And we're done. We have two side congruency statements. We have VT congruent to ST and RT congruent to ST. And we have our angle congruency statement. So triangle VRT is congruent to SRT by side angle side.